Welcome to Healthy and Wealthy Conversations, where we discuss everything that leads to health and wellness for your whole spirit, soul, mind, and body. Hi, and welcome to another episode of Healthy and Wealthy Conversations. I am your host, Casey Bell, and today's conversation is with Georgia Woodbine. Let's get the show started. You um, are a coach, um, business, um, you help with businesses, you help with um, wellness. How did you get into this arena? Get Give us your, your background. Were you born into a family of health and wellness, a business, entrepreneurs, or was this something that you came into later on in life? This was definitely something I came into later on in life. It's basically one of the things I always share as a life coach is that when you start to tap into health and wellness, you have to get to a point in your life where you're either struggling with your physical part of yourself mental, emotional, financial, it's, it's always something that forces you to look for something else to dig deeper within. So for me, I would say definitely it was the setbacks and obstacles and struggles and things that I had to go through. I was going through some serious health issues and I was really forced to start looking at how I can live a healthier lifestyle. Now, one of the most important important questions I ever asked myself was, why am I here? And I think that's when my real transformation began. Now, when you're asking yourself, why am I here? It really starts to kind of like put that puzzle of your life together. It's like you go about life doing things, you become like a people pleaser, you become, you know, you get into the job because somebody told you to do that job, you get into a college because someone told you to get into that college, you, you do things based on things that people pressures that society puts on you to be that particular person. And so, you know, for me, I always say the greatest gift in life is the gift of choice because we can choose what we want to be a part of and what we don't want to be a part of once we understand that power. You know, now for, and, and you know, you can jump in any time because, you know, I'm a talker. You know, I always say that the biggest barrier between what you want and what you're trying to get is your mindset. And I think that once people understand, once you have a changed mindset, you can pretty much accomplish whatever it is that you desire that you wanna accomplish. Like think about the pandemic and think about all the things that force people to, you know, maybe even do a show like this or a podcast or something to tap into their talents and their their gifts and their skills and their natural ability and, figure out how to use that as purpose. Wouldn't you agree? Right, right, right. You know, and, and you, you figure out like, wow, I have something to share. I have, you know, something to share with this particular audience. Now, I always tell people as a life coach. Now, how I started out as a life coach, it started, I would say really, you know, in high school, right? So I was that go-to person that everybody came to advice. Now, I didn't know I would become a life coach. I didn't know this was part of the plan. You know, I think that in life, once you understand that everything that you desire to have, you already have, you already have, you have the power to, to create things. You have the ability to make things happen. You have the gifts and talents, but it's all about learning to align those things. You know, I always say, think of your life as uh, a metaphor for life as you having a garden, right? And the, a whole garden can't be created overnight, right? It takes time. You have to water it. You have to be constantly tending to this garden. And, and it's the same towards your goals and your dreams. You have to sow into that thing. You know, a garden requires care and attention, right? for it to blossom and you can't reap what you don't sow. So you have to ask yourself, when thinking about your life, 
you have to ask yourself, what type of garden do you want to plant? Meaning, what kind of life are you trying to keep, create? You have to ask yourself, what do you want to grow in this garden? Meaning, what is it, what direction are you trying to go in your life and how can you create that and how can you make that happen? And you have to also importantly ask yourself, what purpose does this garden serve? Because it's all about knowing your purpose, right? Now, I know when you started doing the show, you tapped into something that said, there's an audience for this, right? Right. That there's people out there that want to hear what my guests have to say, what I have to say. And so therefore, when you're talking about that metaphor of life and planting seeds, you have to make sure that you are planting good soil. You have to check the condition of your garden. And, and also, and this is so important, you have to protect your garden. You have to protect your garden. And there's a famous quote that I love by Earl Nightingale. And it says, whatever we plant in our subconscious mind and nourish with repetition and emotion will one day become a reality. So it's always about what you're feeding yourself. It's always about the energy that you're surrounding yourself in and looking at your circle, like who's your circle of five? Who are the people that are surrounded around you? Are they bringing you positive energy or are they bringing you negative energy? Now you can pop in at any time, okay. like I said. <laughs> <laughs> well, my next question, because you have mentioned that um, you were having issues yourself, problems and in solving your problems, you you learned um, how to share that, and that's how you became a coach. So, what if briefly tell us some of the problems you had, and um, how did you go about solving those problems, and how did you find those solutions? Okay, so the first step was really um, dealing with my health, right? So I can tell you what happened. My story: I was on a job that I really, really hated, and I was working twelve-hour days. I was overwork, underpaid, I was stressed. I mean, I would go to work feeling this burden of, I don't wanna be here. I just don't wanna be here. And I think for me, that change came when I actually fainted on my job. I was in my little four corner cubicle. And all I remember is this funny smell coming across my nose and, and I passed out on the job. And I remember them taking me to the emergency room because they said that, I was dehydrated. So that for me was the turning point with me facing something that actually, as I look back, was an exit strategy for me. You know what I mean? Because if I, if I didn't, if something like that didn't happen, I guess I would have continued to be at a job that I hated and I would have continued to feel miserable and unhappy. And I think in life that a lot of times you don't make change until you're forced to make change. And when you're forced to make change, you really start to, to see your life differently. And for me, I always share as a life coach, you cannot change what you don't confront, right? So if you say to yourself, I want to change my job, but you're not taking action or doing something to change that job or to change that position that you have, you're going to continuously be unhappy. If you're not happy with the way you look and you want to lose weight, you have to take action, right? You have to figure out what are the things that I'm going to do to make me lose this weight. You can't keep sitting around eating the same foods, doing the same thing, saying, okay, I want to lose weight. I want to lose weight, but you haven't changed your diet. You don't exercise. You don't watch what you eat. So it's always about what are you doing to make that change happen? Now, the question is, why do people struggle to achieve their goals? And it's really because of a couple of things, right? It's, it's fear of, if you have a limiting belief, it's almost like you have this lid, invisible lid that's holding you back from really living to your highest and fullest potential. So you have a fear of financial insecurity is blocking you that, you know, you, you have a financial goal, but you fear, you're, you fear that you can't afford to create whatever it is you're trying to create or get whatever it is you're trying to get. So that's one sense of fear. You fear how other people is going to see you, right? Because it's always about how we look at ourselves, but 
most people are looking at themselves through other people's lenses. They're not looking at themselves, meaning they're not looking at the true self, the person that they want to be. You're looking at the labels that people have put on you over the years. So, and it is fear of not being good enough. You know, most people in life, they fear change because they feel that, wow, you know what? I can't do that. I can't be that. I can't have that because guess what? I've been dealt a bad hand, but you know what? It doesn't matter what hand you've been dealt. It's your choice. It's your choice to come out of a bad situation. It's your choice to come out of a job that's making you stressful because it can affect your physical health like it did for me. You have to make a choice to come out of a, a toxic relationship. You know, you have to make a decision. Nothing happens until something moves. You have to make a decision for change to happen. What is, um, I guess you can say a three-step um, advice you can give someone who's in, um, as you are, they're somewhere where they don't want to be, and they're, before something bad happens, what can you tell them that they can start doing now to get out of it, especially if they know that they just don't want to be there? Absolutely. I would say to start setting goals. You know what? Out of sight, out of mind. But when you start setting goals, and you put a plan of action and you figure out what you want. And like I said before, the most important question you will ever ask yourself is why, why am I doing this? Why am I here? So it's, it's, it's about setting goals and finding out your why. And, and, you know, it's so funny in life, you know, people make life so complicated, but it's really so simple. If you really think about the simple things that you need to do to change your life, ask yourself, why am I here? What is it that I'm trying to accomplish while I'm on this planet Earth? What is it that I should be doing with my time? You know, prioritizing your life based on things that are important to you. Because what happens is when you start living your life based on labels in society, you get lost. You get lost in the shuffle. You don't even know who you are. You don't even know why you're spending time doing this or why someone's pulling you in that direction or why you're doing this. And then you're just constantly going in this motion. You're like, I don't even know what it is I should be doing. And that's because you have to prioritize your life based on things that align with your passion, things that align with your gifts, your talents, your natural abilities. Um, another thing too is important to live in the present moment. And the reason I say that is because I think we get so caught up with worrying about the future and worrying about the past and fretting about the future that you don't really get to enjoy right now. And right now is what you have. Right now is what you have to change your life. Right now is what you have to make that change. You know, self-love is, is it's so crucial to happiness. And most people are chasing things to fill a void, thinking that that will make them happy. They're chasing that perfect job. They're chasing the dollar. They're chasing the relationship. They're ch chasing all these external things that they feel is going to make them feel complete or going to make them feel happy. Now, what do most people want in life? Is to be loved, is to be appreciated, is to be respected, you know? And if you understand what's underneath your motivation for whatever it is that you want, then you'll understand that you don't have to seek external things to fill those voids. Awesome. So you are an author of multiple books. One of the titles um, I saw that um, just at a glance, total BS, um, BS standing for body and soul. Mm -hmm. um, what was the inspiration behind that book? Well, I just knew that that title was going to get everybody's attention, total BS, but it's not the BS that everybody's thinking. Of course, it's BS stands for body and soul. And, and for me, I think that I was going through a transformation in my life with health and wellness, and I wanted to share that journey with other people because getting it's really about getting fit for life. And getting fit for life is not just the physical sense. Getting fit for life is the mental and the emotional. It's all three align, mental, emotional, physical. It's being in alignment. It's understanding that, you know, the key to change is changing habits, habits that have held you hostage, habits that, bad habits that, you know, prevent you from 
becoming your best self. So I wanted to share my journey and of transformation and, and let people really understand that it's really about body and soul. If you're really trying to get to a place in your life where you can find true happiness, where you can, you know, a lot of times people look for happiness and like I said, external things, but those are just temporary things. You know, whatever it is that you are really searching for is it's really within. And it, it's so funny. I think about a story that somebody was telling me many, many years ago when I was a little girl and it was about where, where, where are we gonna hide the gifts? We're gonna hide the gifts in a place where they're least, le least likely to look for it within. And that's why people are constantly searching outside, outside and everything that they need to be happy, everything that they need to be fulfilled, everything to find purpose in their life is really within. And for me, I think that once I started to get on that path of alignment, I realized that, okay, how am I going to do this? And I had to create a mission statement for my life. You know, when I say that you have to create a personal mission statement, most people think of a mission statement as something for a company, something for an organization, something for a nonprofit, but everyone should have their personal mission statement for themselves, for them, for their life. Because what happens is once you start to create that mission statement, all the pieces start to connect, all the dots start to come together. And you're like, oh, that's why I'm doing this. Or that's why I need to be a part of that. Or that's why. And then everything in your life will start to make sense. So I'll share an example of what my personal mission statement is. And so my mission statement is I, Georgia Woodbine, I'm here to empower, motivate, and inspire 1 million plus people to transform their mindset to change their lives. So what does that mean for me? That means that I understand what my mission is, is in life. So therefore, I know what I'm going to prioritize my time doing. I know how I'm going to set my goals. And I also know, like, what is my why? And so when you create that mission statement, everything starts, the puzzle starts to, to make sense in your life. Awesome. So you said it's, um, it's the whole body, um, soul, and emotions. And when you, in the new year, most people only deal with the physical, the losing weight and the getting the healthy, um, getting a gym membership. There aren't that many, well, there really is no mental health program commercial mm -hmm. or you know there's go to the gym and get on this right. food diet there really isn't anything that says get on this emotional whatever so what can someone do to start really because the physical of course is important mm -hmm. the thing is if you're emotionally drained and spiritually drained at some point you're not going to want to get up and exercise and in fact in most cases you'll stop eating healthy and you know you'll medicate with the the cookies and the cakes and all the stuff you shouldn't be doing. So right. what can people do to make sure that they are paying, I guess you can say equal amount of time on their, their emotions and their mental state as they are with their body. For me, and I can only share what helped me personally, and that's meditation. So meditation, I started meditating about 16 years ago. And, you know, for most people, they say, Oh, you know, meditation is a work for me. Um, it, it, you know, that stuff is is crap, and it's not true. It really works. You know, when you meditate, and you know what, it's no right or wrong way to meditate. You first start off with maybe using an aid to kind of get you to relax, because meditation is really about breathing. It's it's about your breathing. It's about um, trying not to think about anything, and it's also about self reflection. So it's it's also about you having that moment alone from everyone else. And I think that most people fear that having that moment alone because they fear what they're gonna see. You know, they may not like what they're gonna see once you become one with self. So meditation, you know, start off doing it five minutes a day. You know, maybe I always recommend doing it like between 6 a.m. and 9 a.m. in the morning and between 10 and 12 a.m. at night. And the reason why I say those times is because usually up in the morning and right before you go to bed, that's when you're most relaxed. So 
you could really start to tap into that higher part of yourself. And why I recommend meditation, meditation changed my life. It gives you clarity, it gives you focus, it gives you intuition, it gives you insight of life. It, it shows you how to create the life you love because that's a big thing for me, creating the life you love. That's basically what my message is about, how to create the life that you love. How do you do that? How do you go about doing that? And it, you know, most people want a quick fix, but in life, there are no quick fixes. You have to do the work. You have to put, you have to invest that time within yourself. So I definitely recommend meditation because why? It gives you balance. It helps you to, you know, just self-reflect and really tap into a deeper part of yourself. And like I said, for me, meditation, it changed my life because it gave me ideas on how to generate income. It, it just, it just, it's just so many great things come from meditation. So that's one thing I could definitely recommend for people to do. Thank you for that. So mm -hmm. I see here, you are also a, a public speaker and um, are you, is that something you will be continuing to do, um, I guess, during the summer? And if so, if someone wants you to speak somewhere, what can they expect from your services? They can expect me to have uh, an empowering workshop or an empowering force of people to get them to think differently and be a change agent, because that's really what I am. I'm a change agent. I'm all about getting people to the next level to really start digging deeper within who they, who they are and who they're trying to become. For me, as, as a speaker, I think that what people feel is something that comes from the inside, is something that comes from my passion and something that comes from my struggles, my obstacles, my setbacks, that comes from me coming out of those things and transforming my life to be successful, to create the life I love, to um, turn my passion into profits and to be able to, to share that with other people that, it, it's electrifying. It's electrifying, not for me, just for me, but it's it's an electrifying feeling when people can connect with that part of, 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 of sense of self and knowing that, wow, if you can do it, I can do it. Oh my gosh, you motivate me, you enlighten me, you empower me, you make me want to change my life. And so that's always my mission even doing interviews like this, even speaking in public, even doing public speaking, it's always about saying something that somebody can identify with, that somebody can connect with, so they can say, you know what, I'm going to get on this path to change my life, because you know what, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I don't want to stay this way. I don't want to continue my life this way. I want it to change. But how do I do that? And that's what I do. I share the tools for people to make that change. And are you available both virtual and in-person events? Yes, I am. Um, and people can definitely go to my website, www.georgiawoodbine.com. I do have a free gift to give your audience when they go to my website. So if they go to www.georgiawoodbine.com. They will get a free gift, the five secrets to turn your passion into profit. It's a free guide. Once they put their email in, they'll get that free guide and it'll give you some insight on how to go about starting that process of change and the steps to take. And, you know, there's lots of goodies on my website. If you go to um, get the tools, there's lots of products there. There's the, I have a vision planner. I don't know for, for, I'm sure you probably know what a vision planner is, um, vision boards. I actually created a planner that's like a date book where you can actually put your ideas, you can jot your notes down, you can write down your affirmations, you can plan, because it's really, I, and I, I can't stop saying this, that it's always about taking action. Change will never happen unless you take action. So I have the Create the Life You Love Vision Planner Journal where you can actually write down day to day, week to week, month to month, whatever it is that you're trying to create. And then you can go back and look and say, wow, this actually happened. And there's affirmation stickers in there. And there's lots of, lots of great things on how to be, you know, talk about the things that you're grateful for. I think sometimes people are so focused on everything that's going wrong and all the negativity that they don't look at what they're grateful for. And if you wanna attract more of the things you want, you have to be grateful for the things that you have. 
Thank you for that. Um, last thing, and then I'll let you go. Any words or um, lasting words you want to give to the person who's either um, thinking about starting a new business or um, upping their business? Um, I guess that, you know, the key to anything in life, and, and I'll just share this quote because I think it in kind of encompasses what I really want to say. It's by Dr. Steve Maraboli, and it says, the universe doesn't give you what you ask for with your thoughts. It gives you what you demand with your actions. And I would just like to leave it at that. <laughs> that is all the time we have for you today on Healthy and Wealthy Conversations. I want to thank our guest, Georgia Woodbine, for stopping on by. And you, the guests, always thank you for watching. Have a great day.